Kim Kyungishan Dojian. All right, guys, time to get things started for this IPL tournament of, uh, well, Team Arena Challenge champions almost. It is actually the lower bracket finals, and yes, we're going to start is. out with our Red Terran player on the left side of the map representing NS Hosa. It is Sting, and on the right side of the map in the blue representing old generation StarCrafters, it is 4GG, otherwise known as Finn. Righty Roo, so here we go. It's a TVT to kick things off for the lower bracket finals. And like we said before, maybe a little bit of a, uh, a preview of what we're going to see from the tournament of Terrence that will take place next Tuesday. But uh, we already know that Enes Hosa's representative for that tournament is going to be Jock G. And Big kind of an there. interesting note, we're going to see former OGS member Nada actually is the champion selected for Complexity MVP. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they just picked up Nada, so why not use him right away? He's a new player, but they're champion, I guess. And I got to say, I am I'm like actually extra excited today because uh, this is actually the one year anniversary to the day of me starting to cast professionally. Yes, it was one year ago. Um, well, awesome. not quite this time because of the time zone difference. But I did Lasira versus Huck as my very first GSL match mm -hmm. way back with Kelly Milky. So it was oh, wow. one year ago today. So I'm actually super excited. That's pretty cool. What a year it's yeah. been too, man. It's been a crazy year. That's for sure. And, uh, well, hopefully many more positive, awesome years ago. I yes. feel like I'm giving a toast now. I should have champagne Thanks. in my hand to we many more awesome Are we StarCraft to years. So not on stream. Oh. I get drunk way too easily. <laughs> You're such a cheap date, Captain Jamis. <laughs> I am. <laughs> That's good for all you guys not out there. I'm complaining. Uh, all right. <laughs> I know you're not. Uh, all right. Okay. That's not yes. So, uh, hey, guess. At normal time for both <laughs> these guys. Coming up on 13. Nothing out of the ordinary. Barracks, normal time. No gas first builds. No uh, uh, gasless fast expands. Yeah. So, nothing really, like you said, out of the ordinary for either of these guys. You know, I don't think we've seen a TVT on this map yet. Um, nope, it, it reminds me a little bit of how I might think a dual site would play out, actually. The bases are in yeah. similar places, very similar places, in fact, on this map. So I wonder if we're going to see some similarities in how the builds end up. Um, now, this map has, of course, you know, ramps and, and uh, gaps and stuff in different places. But overall, there are a lot of similarities. You know, the mains and the natural are in the same place. The uh, one big difference is that there is a ramp going into the natural, so that makes things a little bit safer. Oh, Scout denied, but he does see the tech lab, of course, so he knows, well, it's probably going to be a Reaper. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so it's kind of interesting there. And uh, Finn was not able to see anything. Yeah, the big difference from Daybreak, of course, is that at your natural dual on day, or dual side, I'm sorry, is that at your natural, you have actually, this would be connected. This would actually yeah, be open, open space there, yeah. there. So that's the one real big difference. Yep. Um, but, yeah, it looks like. The natural isn't quite as open. No, not as much on this map. Which really, I mean, was one of the bigger problems with Dual Sight as a map, is that the Natural and the Third were very wide open. This was uh, especially a big problem for Protoss players, but uh, not so much for Terran and Zerg. And Finn did have his Tech Lab scouted, so what might yeah. have been Reapers to start or something along those lines, which is exactly what Sting is preparing for, is now going to become uh, just Combat Shield and a few extra Marines. Makes sense, and he's getting that expansion up as well. And uh, as we can see here, it looks like Sting is going to go for Banshees, and that would be a good choice against someone who were, was making Reapers early on, mm -hmm. except that uh, Finn is not. He's going to have actually quite powerful Marines coming out here. They're not going to have Stim, but they will have 10 extra hit points apiece. They'll take three shots from a Banshee to kill rather than just two, so he'll be able to zone out those Banshees uh, much more effectively with this opening. You know, you were mentioning this first TBT we've seen on this map. We've seen both Protoss players and Zerg players pick this whenever it's come up in rotation. Of course, this was the starting map, and both teams do blind picks in these. So yeah. they know the map, but they do not know who their opponent is going to send out. So it's kind of cool that they both decided to send out Terrans, as, uh, you know, Terrans have kind of been forced on this map a couple of times, but we've never seen quite this matchup and we do have a cloaked banshee making its way out for sting well you know i wouldn't be surprised at all that uh, ogs sent out 4gg or finn rather expecting to face a protoss player he does have very strong tvp and so uh, anasosa kind of switching things up a little bit and sending in a terran player instead despite being a very protoss heavy team and finn has led off a couple of times for ogs in this tournament yep. as well so they've not been afraid to use him right away yeah i love all that little strategy that goes on in the team league. I, I love team league so much. It'll be fun to cast a uh, you know individual league tournament coming up here with tournament of champions. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I definitely love team league. 
It's, uh, I, I think it's just the most fun. There's so much strategy that goes into it, like you said. I think specifically the all-kill format makes for a yeah. very entertaining way to do it as well. And this is interesting. 4GG actually scanned his opponent. He didn't see this up here, but he saw the timing on when the expansion was coming up. And he has already put down his engineering bay a while ago, so he's responding with some missile turrets. Hook Banshee's not going to kill him. Yeah, uh, Finn's going to be about as prepared for these Banshees as you possibly can be, and that uh, Cloak is going to end up being a bit of a waste of money here mm -hmm. for Sting. Yeah, Cloak does just finish here now, but he sees the missile turrets. He's like, all right, well, I'll try to find a place to do damage. You can always kind of pick off a couple SCVs on the outside here, but yeah, look at that. Three shots to kill a Marine is just not very effective here. Yeah. Not within range of the turret, too, it looks like. Yeah. Just uh, chasing that Banshee back ever so slowly. It looks like it's just going to try and kill whatever it possibly can. But as you said, with Combat Shield, these Marines are very, very resilient. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, quite nice, actually, for Finn. And he's going to be able to follow this up with a plus one in stim timing as well as soon as he cleans up these Banshees. And he gets it. Very nice. Gets the first Banshee, but the second one is just coming in now to his natural. There yeah. it is. He's like, oh, I just dealt with this. Come on, man. <laughs> Can you give me a break? Well, uh, this Banshee certainly will not. Has already stolen one kill. Continuing to go to work on the supply depot. It's uh, not being repaired up quite yet for Finn. But again, it, it's not the biggest deal in the world if that's all he loses out of this. Yeah, it would be bad. He's lost a couple Marines here. Three to this Banshee alone right now. Yeah, starting to repair up the supply depot now. It's no longer on fire, and this Banshee is picking up a few more kills. Sting with some pretty impressive controls. He macros behind this. He actually did make another Banshee, and he is continuing into his siege tank production now. Yep. Very true here. Cloak runs, runs out, so the Banshee does make a run for it itself as well, and that's going to open up for GG for a timing here. But there are siege tanks out there, and siege mode is either going to finish or be just about to finish when Finn gets there. In fact, I think it's going to finish right before he gets there. Seems like and, it. And, oh, these armies are actually going to meet in the middle of the map. Ooh. This isn't actually very good for Sting oh. if uh, 4GG catches him. Yeah, and he actually stims, catches the second Banshee as well. So both the Banshees wow. have gone down. Siege mode is finished, though, so Sting will be able to retain control of the map, but he lost those very, very expensive Banshees. Yeah, lucky break, though, for a Sting that he didn't just walk blindly into that group of Marines. He could have lost both tanks and a good amount of Marines as well. Um, so as it is, both players kind of ending up about even. You know, Finn losing some of his Marines, but getting the couple Banshees. Uh, Sting kills some Marines and saves his siege tanks, but loses those expensive, expensive Banshees. So uh, things still uh, pretty even for both of these guys. And Finn is reinvesting into his barracks infrastructure and adding on a second factory as well. So he wants to catch up in that siege tank production. Uh, of course, he's had his second base down quite a bit longer than his opponent. So he's uh, eight workers ahead now. Mm -hmm. And that is slowly starting to propel him ahead in overall supply. Yep. That's exactly right. Stim on the way now for Sting. So he is going to move into kind of basic marine tank. Adding on a second factory as well, just so we can pump out those tanks twice as fast. Obviously, some more upgrades on the way for Finn as well. Adding in medevacs now to heal up some of those units. And what is that? Ah, another Cloak Banshee coming in for Sting. Yeah, looks like it's going to pick off a couple of units here, but it's within the detection range. Oh. Gets out of there, though. There's the scan, and the Banshee goes down once again. Yes, he's forcing scans out of his opponent, but Finn has been able to deal with those Banshees really effectively. Yeah, you know, once Stim is out, it's just really, really difficult to get in there and do damage against someone, especially someone who's going very heavy Marine, like Finn is doing. So I think the Banshee aggression is more or less done for now from Sting. He can use that Starport to start producing medevacs of his own, or, you know, possibly make some Vikings and things like that as well. And Finn has been macroing very, very well throughout this entire time. He's now sitting on 52 workers. Um, he is behind by three tanks right now, but don't forget he's double producing uh, his air units. Well, if he so desires, he does have a reactor sitting on that, and he's double producing his tanks. Um, looking at the upgrades, though, he's got plus one weapons to his opponents. Nothing, actually. Does he even have an engineering bay? Uh, Maybe not. Doesn't look like it. No, he spent a oh, lot of... Well, is. he does have one, yeah. Um, in the, oh, there's plus one starting right now for Sting. But yeah, he spent so much money on the Banshees, on the Cloak, on the Siege Tanks, on the Siege Tech. He just hasn't had any extra resources to get any sort of upgrades yet. And uh, the SEV did get him pretty far. Saw a few of those Marines sharking around the middle of the map. Yep. Next to so ironically space enough, yeah. the Space Shark. I was just, oh, God, I just realized as soon space as I shark said is that. like, I'm not impressed. One of those moments when you say things and you're like, I immediately regret that I just said that. Could be worse. Uh, I suppose so. Not Could much, though. Worse. A little bit of Marine tank action going on from Finn. 
Yeah. Not a whole lot of tanks quite yet because he does have such a uh, heavy, powerful Marine composition at this point. They are 1-1. One, one. Siege mode will be finished here. And so with some proper Microfin, might be able to get in and do some damage. He does have the supply advantage. And, oh, he might just actually decide to start elevating things up here as well. That's exactly what he's going to do. It's going to force Sting to start shifting some units back. Supply Depot falls really quickly, and now all the units are inside of the main. Is he going to avoid the tanks? Looks like he's dropping down around the back of them. Loses a couple of units in the process. Yep. Really needs to deal with Oops. that uh, that missile turret as well. He does. At the same time, he's going to power his way through the front. Oh, man. Two siege tanks already there, and he needs to split up those Marines and stim. He's trying to go around the outside. There we go, now decide to do it, but it's a little bit late. All the Marines coming in for Stim here. Yeah, but, uh, you know, Sting is he's doing all right at holding this off at the front, even though 4GG is exacting some damage, but yep. oh, wow. Finn is just running through the production. No more tanks for Sting at all. Yeah, you know, I thought it was going to be good if he would just get those tech labs, but he got both factories. Sting cleaning up that army here, but taking so much damage behind all this. 4GG is going to go after the SCVs now, and look at this Sting! not pulling the SCVs away. Oh, man, he lost a lot of those there. Yeah. And Finn should just be able to escape if he wants to. And looks like that's just what he's going to do. Of course, loses a lot in this attack, but the gain was so worth it. He's up by oh, 40 yeah. supply now. His production is way better than army his opponent. Two. And here it comes. He's just going to go right after the orbital command. No, he catches the tanks unseized. A lot Unfortunately, of tanks, doesn't go after the tanks, pulls back out of range, and yep. wants to make sure he doesn't lose any unnecessary units. Yeah, if he can sneak in there and kill some of the SCVs, so that might be the biggest benefit that he can take out of this right now. Um, out getting the gas does help as well. But yeah, killing SCVs right now is going to be the main priority. Coming in again with another drop sting, getting very, very low on economy at this point. Uh -huh. And even though once again, you know, Finn is getting his first forces crushed by these tanks, he just falls farther and farther ahead in supplies, up by 50 now, increasing to 60, cleaning up everything Sting has. Sting actually going to make his way in with his own drop, but uh, Finn has already killed 44 workers this game. Yeah, not bad at all. It's going to be very tough for Sting to come back here. This drop might do a little bit of damage here, mm -hmm. but overall, Finn should be fine. Yeah, he's going to finish that off right there yeah. and we may actually see a GG in a, a little bit here from Sting I mean I might be oh maybe I'm a little bit early on this Sting's gonna make a one last push here and he does have a large amount of siege tanks so he does still have a, a bit of a chance here but it's gonna be kind of a remote chance I mean he's got to have just the perfect engagement maybe even kind of uh, hope that Finn is gonna make some mistakes to get back into this game yeah Finn playing so well so far and Sting He's, uh, he's got a decent force, but he is just so far behind at the moment. Worker count is 14 to 64 yeah. now, back by 50 workers. He may have the same size army as his opponent, but he has virtually no workers to back this up. Yeah, pretty much. So this army is going to be about it for Sting. I mean, as you can see back home, he's producing some Marines in the medevac, but he doesn't have enough to really add on siege tanks and get upgrades. This is a nice little elevator move into the main of Finn. And like I mentioned too, that is a lot, a lot of siege tanks, so Finn does need to be careful about how he engages this. And Finn looks like he just wants to go oh, for he's it. going for it. All right. Oh, okay, well, he could actually defend and then reproduce behind this. He put his opponent oh. way behind, but he is going to keep pushing ahead now. Oh, God, Sting loses Oops. a medevac full of Marines there, and those are losses he just can't take. Yeah, well, the medevac's getting a little bit ahead here. Finn needs to be careful. Oh, oh no. Oh, Finn. Oh, man, Finn losing two medevacs there. That doesn't help. He's still going to beat this army, it looks like. Yeah. But that is rough. Oh, yeah, all the SMBs going down now. Finn has plenty of hope to defend against this. He's kind of stopped the push from Sting. Yeah. Let's and see here now. Wow, yeah. Finn has quite a few forces. He's now up by yeah. almost 100 supply, and Sting is just losing everything. Yeah, so, you know, Sting may think he's in kind of a base raid situation right now, base raid situation, but doesn't look like Finn's going to agree with that. No sending everything. Cleaning up the last of the units, it is now 15 supply to 125. That's and a GG. That's GG. OGS Finn bringing an early lead for old generation StarCrafters in this lower league finals.